morning. So today uh, I'm meeting up with Tom in about an hour to go to the cinema and I've told him that we're going to go and see the new Coen Brothers film because he loves the Coen Brothers. Um, but what I've actually got us tickets for is Batman vs Superman, uh, which he's adamantly refused to go and see. Uh, I'm sort of shooting myself in the foot here because I don't really want to see this film and it's three hours long, but it's going to be worth it for me just for those four seconds in the cinema when he realises that we're watching Batman v Superman and not um, Hail Caesar. I may be reviewing this film on my own depending on how annoyed at me he is, um, but whatever happens it should be an interesting morning. See you later. Put it down. Hello, I'm Chris. And I'm Tom. And you're watching that review show. Tom, what are we talking about today? Man of Steel 2, Batman 5, Superman, Dawn of Justice. Today is a day for truth. The world needs to know what happened and to know what he stands for. That kind of power is very dangerous. So, Chris, what does Man of Steel 2, Batman 5, Superman, Dawn of Justice, have for a plot? Okay, so, the film follows Batman yep. as he is attempting to continue the success of the Christopher Nolan films, uh -huh. Superman as he's trying to salvage the wreckage of Man of Steel, yep. and Wonder Woman as she's trying to establish the Justice League and the wider DC universe. Hmm, not bad. But what's the plot? I mean, you've just told me what the story is about. What's the plot of the story? So, Batman <laughs> doesn't like Superman because Superman killed everyone at the end of Man of Steel. And we get to see that from Batman's perspective. Yep. Pretty good. And then, so it follows him trying to, trying to get weapons so that he can fight Superman because he thinks he's too dangerous. Superman, in the meantime, is doing things... He saves some people, but in a very emo way. It like, makes it look like he hates doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose what's going on during all of this is that Lex Luthor is also trying to get kills. weapons to kill Superman yeah. and also undermining Batman because reasons. Yeah, because they need to. Because Superman and Batman need to fight against Lex Luthor. So we can't, we can't agree with what Luthor's doing, even though he's doing the same thing as Batman. Uh, yeah. So he has to be doing it evilly. So, yeah, this, so yeah. this film is basically trying to pick up the pieces after Zack Snyder forgot what Superman was and used him to destroy half of Metropolis at the end of Man of Steel. And this is the central problem of the film for me. Um, it has a big issue, and that's that the filmmakers didn't know how to portray the perception of Superman in the film. So people have an opinion of Superman because... He's, he's a global phenomenon. I mean, it's set in the very modern day, kind of a real world with many dykes running around. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, sometimes it's like everyone loves Superman. Sometimes it's like everyone hates Superman. And yeah. it never quite gets it right. And it, it, yeah, fine, play both ways, but make it kind of clear where you're going with it. It's, it's really strange. Yeah, it had this issue of it, it. The film starts with Metropolis being destroyed and they put Bruce Wayne into the middle of it so that you can understand where he's coming from. You get the impression everyone thinks Superman's bad. But, that, well, but then you see Superman doing things which are questionable. He's acting as though there are no consequences to his actions. And you get people saying things like uh, on the news, you know, is this the end of the love affair with Superman? And you're like, what love affair with Superman? When did that love affair start? Was it immediately after he destroyed Metropolis and killed thousands of people? Or was it when he saved a cat? sort of four months after that. Yeah, but yeah, there's a um, written in graffiti in one bit, it says something like, if, if you're looking for his monuments, look around you. And I was like, what, the destroyed buildings? From, yeah. Or the newly built buildings that they had to rebuild after he, him and Zod destroyed the entire city. That's it's, kind of... it's got that big problem, and you're never quite sure 
whose side you're supposed to be on, who you're meant to be rooting for, and who you're meant to be rooting against. I, am I supposed to be questioning Superman, or am I supposed to be accepting Superman? I saw him hold a satellite to ransom, or whatever. Well, he crashes a satellite and says, I'm holding a world to ransom mm -hmm. uh, in, at the end of the previous film. But he, it's okay, because he's kind of hot. Um, oh, I hate that so much. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that, that's the big problem for the plot, is the big problem for the characters and how we're supposed to understand them. Yeah, and so it never quite meshes uh, properly. That, that's it. I was going I was going into this ready to defend Ben Affleck and say he was a great Batman and the film was just shoddy. I think he was an alright Batman. Mm. Like, his action scenes were cool, but that wasn't really much to do with Ben Affleck. No, no. The way he played the character was like, okay... I like he's Henry. Really beefy, a bit too beefy to be Bruce Wayne in a way. You know, yeah. he has to have that sort of. I like Henry Cavill as Superman. I think he's again, he's he's fine, and I think he could be a really good Superman if the films he was in weren't. They were fine. They were fine. Yeah, the actors. Yeah. Um, I I'm tired of Amy Adams, and in fact, I think uh, a lot of the problem <laughs> problem of watching this film and enjoying it is that you can't when the dialogue is so awful. Mm -hmm. Um. Lex Luthor sometimes was incoherent, but I suppose that's partly the point. I quite I thought Jesse Eisenberg did the best with the, the material, but I felt that every time Clark and Lois had a romantic moment, it was just like I was taken out of it. I was going, oh, God, listen to this. Did George Lucas write this? Mm -hmm. um, they shoehorn them in at really inappropriate moments. There was one part of the film right at the climax. There's a big fight going on, and Superman ends up just with Lois. Like, you can see the battle going on there. And they're having this massive long conversation. And in the cinema, I was actually going, not now, Clark. Yeah. Not now, Clark. Not now, Clark. But it was important for the moment to get suddenly shoehorn into emotional impact. Yeah. It was stupid. It's like, like, stop writing bad dialogue and putting scenes in with these two characters. It's... it's it seems his only motivation in the world is to save her. He seems to hear whenever she's in trouble. Yeah, she falls off a building, she's hidden by a hostage, she's trapped yeah. under rubble and underwater hitting things, and every time he goes, boom, I'm here, Lois. Yeah, it's whereas at the end of Man of Steel, he's kissing Lois while there's, like, presumably thousands of people trapped under rubble in the background, and he's just... <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, he's got to be able to hear everything. He's so discriminating. I think, actually, what's happening is she's texting him. Right. She's like, I'm in trouble. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. No, I think, that, like you say, the dialogue was pretty bad. Like, the only bit I can specifically remember is when Superman comes to, to get Lex towards the end and he says this wonderful line like, I'll take you without having to break you. Yeah, I'll, ta I'll take you not broken. Or something. But it <laughs> rhymes. more than you like, had this weird sort of rhyming. I'll take you not breaking you. Yeah, <laughs> it was something like, it's like, I'll take... I'll, I'll get you taken without breaking you. And it was just... I, I found Superman very, very aggressive in this film. Oh, well, it, it follows on from Man of Steel. The way, he, the way he approaches Batman... He's punching a child when he first meets Batman. Yeah, it's it's, just, yeah he's high, highly aggressive. And actually, the, I think, judging by the reaction of the children in the cinema, the film was punching children quite often as well. Yeah, there's a lot of moments where it goes quiet and then does a sort of jump scare. And there were moments in those silences, you, you mentioned that you could actually hear children crying. Like, there were lots of little kids in this 12A film. Yeah. And it was as high 12A as you can get, really, yeah. just for the, the dread and threat. The red capes are coming. The red capes are coming. I have an issue with this kind of villain, especially in something that's supposed to be like the gritty, you know, gritty grounded version of things. Um, when the evil, you know, deranged villain does the whole talking like this, my evil plan is going to come together. Well, you know, the red capes are coming. He was a crazy person. Capes are coming. He was a crazy person. Ooh, he's supposed to have been like physically abused by his dad. He's have you ever met a crazy person? Well, Someone who'd been yeah, abused by the father? They're not like that. I know, but cinematic crazy person, you know. Yeah, and to me that was, that was a just... Actually, come to think of it, I watched Good Will Hunting, and that was amazing. 
Yeah. His whole bit could have been cut out. It could have just been Batman has an issue with Superman and they fight, and that would have been. And fine. Lex Luthor's issue with Superman is the same as Batman's. Yeah, but, but, but so uh, you get the sense that he's doing nefarious things, but you never see him. He he does blow up a whole building full of people, but that's after it's all gone wrong and Batman's nicked his kryptonite. Yeah, and he does it <laughs> he does it to frame Superman so that he can justify his taking out of Superman. In, like, so in the in the original Superman film, Lex Luthor wants to kill Superman because he has this plan to destroy California, and he realizes that Superman will get in the way of that, and he's mm-hmm. like, right, we've got to get rid of Superman. Whereas in this one, it's just like. I really want to get rid of Superman because I think he's dangerous. Oh, you know, a lot of what Lex Luthor does in this film is stupid and pointless. I mean, like, that uh, establishing thing of, like, everyone's against Superman again now because he frames Superman by staging a gunfight in a desert. It's like, well, Superman doesn't use guns, so of course people aren't going to think he's entirely responsible. What's going on here? It's just stupid. Yeah. Um, I think there were, there were lots of bits where I was confused, lots of bits that weren't set up. All weren't paid off later. There, there was just like inconsistencies. Characters knowing things they shouldn't. Lois Lane, like, and Superman both knowing that the spear is needed. Batman saying, "I've only got one thing left, and it's the spear," and then using a gas grenade. Oh, come on! Yeah. Oh, and things like Lois's revelation, where she's like, "But how did they know that Superman would be in the middle of the desert?" And then it shows the flashback. It seems back significant. To Superman something. landing in the middle of the desert, and then she runs off, and you're like. But how did they know he'd be in the middle of the desert? Well, and, and why is that important? And it never, yeah. it never becomes clear why that's sort of like a moment of discovery. But, yeah. Tom, at the end of the film, Superman hit people through buildings and there was explosions and stuff, so who cares about the story and the plot? <laughs> there was one bit where Superman was thrown at a building and like, goes through it, and he went, again! Yeah, off we go again. <laughs> the people of... Oh... I always said the people of Gotham. Did you notice? They fought in Gotham. That Gotham was City the is was. in Metropolis. Yeah, it's just across the water. It's in Metropolis. I like the uh, fact... It's like a district. They did cover that bit, though, because when the fight got brought to Gotham, Wonder Woman said to Batfleck, why, why did you come back to Gotham? And he's like, oh, this part of Gotham's abandoned. No one lives here. Which is... And you're like, oh, OK. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, there was now a... we can smash things yeah, through buildings. Right. And no critics can moan. OK, so speaking of um, uh, explosions with no consequence, there's a bit where they basically they nuke someone in space. Now, you think about it, they're firing a, an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's like a, a, a space-ready rocket nuke. Mm-hmm. And they're aiming at something that, that is a person size. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how does that work? <laughs> You're deflating a bit. I'm going, I can't take it anymore. It was, oh, it was really stupid. Uh, quite like Batman. Do, do you want to discuss spoilers? Very quickly. Okay. Spoilers warning. Skip to this time code if you want to avoid the fact that Doomsday was in the film and Superman dies at the end. Yeah, so in Batman vs Superman, Batman won because Superman's dead at the end. Mm-hmm. You had the point of why didn't Superman has the kryptonite spear that he knows will kill Doomsday, yes. and he sacrifices himself to kill Doomsday. And you said, In why a, is he doing that? It's tactically suicidal. And I made the point that after Man of Steel, we need to see Superman as willing to sacrifice himself because he's meant to be a good guy, not a genocidal maniac, right? My other issue with that, though, you said, why didn't you give it to Batman? And I said, give it to Batman or Wonder Woman, they'll do it. Give it to Wonder Woman. Stand back a bit. Don't give it to Batman, he's a human. Give it to Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah, Wonder Woman. What is Wonder Woman? Because she never explained what she is. Yeah, she's a meta human. Yeah, okay. Didn't you read the Google results on. So, mutants, but where did that come from? It's, it's a bit silly and a bit, like, hand-wavy, like, oh, there are these things. Well, that's because they're setting up the Justice League, and that will be explained in the Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, Ninja, Wonder Woman, and whoever the f*** else turns up in it films. Um, Spider-Man, he's DC, right? But yeah, oh. so the film had this big emotional ending where Superman dies, and you obviously know he's not going to die because they're setting up the Justice League. Big emotional ending. Only big and emotional because just beforehand... During the fight, him and Lois Lane have a conversation where they profess their love, and somehow she knows as soon as he takes us for beer that he's going to his death. I think she knows he's going to be stupid enough to do it himself. I think it's fairly obvious when he's like, Lois, um, I yeah. love you, I really, really love you. And yeah. she's like, no, 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 no. I can only sort of fly. <laughs> you know, you remember, it's like, he, you can't go near this thing, oh. so I'm going to fight something with it. Like, Superman, give it, give it to one of them. I don't care if it makes plot sense. It makes no character sense. You don't commit suicide. It made film writer sense. They needed to write him in as a good character so everyone goes, okay, Superman's definitely good and there's no better way to do that than to remind us, like they did 16 times in Man of Steel, that he is a Jesus metaphor. Yeah, I mean, it's there to show us that he's good but it did feel like the screenwriters just, they, they said we've got 10, 15 minutes left of run time. Oh God, quick, we, uh, let's kill Superman.
So, Tom, mm. would you say that, Bat uh, sorry, Man of Steel 2, Batman 5, Superman Dawn of Justice <laughs> is worth the ticket price? Uh, y yes, actually. <laughs> I know, you forced me to go, you tricked me, you used subterfuge and, and cunning, but uh, I had fun. Did you just say subterfuge? Subterfuge. Yeah, no, I had fun. Um, uh, there are some big disappointments, namely Wonder Woman. I think she could be a great character. But they've made her look stupid. She, they haven't updated her. Like, why is she wearing this silly outfit? There's sh shots of her in, like, 1918 wearing this <laughs> dumb superhero outfit. You know, I know Superman is still, you know, sort of vaguely not updated fully and looks a bit daft, but come on, she, she looks like an ancient Greek. Um, so I was really disappointed about her. Batman, however, loved. Great. More, more Batman murdering people, please. Um... Yeah. So, Chris, for you, is this worth the ticket price? <sighs> no. I think the, the Batman fight scenes were awesome. Beyond that, it was fairly forgettable. I'm, the, I was relieved and disappointed that I wasn't as angry at it as I thought I would be. Mm -hmm. I thought it would make me really annoyed. It, in the end of the day, it was just a bit miserable. It wasn't, it wasn't really fun. And there was like, he was, all, all the the good stuff. Like, Superman saves the day was miserable. Yeah, there's like <laughs> ten minutes of cool Batman action, yeah. and other than that, I just didn't really care about anyone or anything. So I'd say um, no. If you want to go see a kids' film, go see Zootropolis. <laughs>